Today is the first Monday of the month and we get a lot of care and share deliveries today. And so what I do is make sure that um, any uh, excess food that one food pantry might get, uh, I move it around. So in the past, we might have, you know, 500 pounds of potatoes and Lahara can only really handle a third of that. So I move that other stuff around and I might take it to Creed or San Luis or anywhere that, um, you, you know, they need that fresh produce. One of the things that makes the valley unique is just how big and spread out and rural it is. And so one of the issues that we have is food access. Um, here in Alamosa we have several grocery stores um, that have lots of produce and dairy and meat. Um, however, but that, that's not very uh, common in the San Luis Valley. There's lots of remote communities that um, don't have a grocery store at all. And really the only food that you can get in, our, in those communities are at our food pantries. There's a bunch of potatoes over there you can have. Okay, do you want you, them in boxes or do you, you want them in your crates? I've got those crates. I don't have a ton, but I'll go get them out and then we'll... Our food bank network is a solution to this access problem. With 15 food pantries, we are pretty accessible throughout really any little corner in the valley. Um, and we also, you know, in those smaller grocery stores that maybe don't have affordable produce or um, a lot of options for meat and dairy, we uh, supply nutritious food at zero cost and there are, there's no means testing, so anyone who needs food can walk through our doors and receive that food. Thank you guys so much for your help today. Sure, grab it up. Every place has its own little psychology. Yeah, to, to, to say that Swatch is like Antonito or like Crestone or like Almosa would be a complete uh, detriment to the to the uniqueness of each place. Yes, well, you're gonna have a big load. I said, no, I think there's only like about 34 boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give him a heart attack now. <laughs> The Food Bank Network is not a co cohesive unit. <laughs> um, each community in the San Luis Valley is completely different and our food pantries reflect that. And the people that operate those food pantries are also unique. We try to allow pantries to have as much autonomy as, as they want to make their own decisions for what makes sense for their own communities. I love roasting the chicken and putting these under the chicken. Butterballs. Yeah, we'll take some cabbage, yes please. I've got cabbage and fingerling potatoes and then I got some cocoa puffs and then you I love you gals. I love you. Thank you so much. Alright. I love being a part of that. I love being able to help ease the the logistical burden of of like, okay, our community has brought this to our attention and how do we address it? You know, being able to help work through those those challenges and find the solutions. I mean, that gives me life. That that gives me purpose, and I and I love that. That's what I do for work. I mean, it's a blessing. It's it's my it's my service and my practice, and um, it's the only thing I want to do. You know, serve the people here in this valley and um, yeah.
can't pull two? I would pull one out of each of these okay. or something. Yeah. Just a Garlic mustard. Oh, I guess that will taste good. Yeah. Just put it in foil and you'll be good for the day. Yeah. <laughs> so, Do you have your kids in the house? Yes. Okay. So on the cereal, you can get two of the smaller boxes or one of the bigger boxes. I'll take two of the fruit wheels. The fruit wheels? Okay. Oh, wait. One. Well, we have an amazing community amazing churches who support this food bank and keep it afloat. We have monetary donations, food donations, and to me it just is a, com a community caring for itself. And so when the community is in good shape, everybody benefits from that. She said it. <laughs> <laughs> In a perfect world, food banks wouldn't exist. People would have all of the resources that they need to go to the grocery store and get that food themselves. Missy taught me it's just leave them together so you're not trying to cut through it separately. And I think you did that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I don't think you did that. Mr. Harper. One more time. Well, see, there's, there's, you can't turn yourself. I'm trying. There's no public transportation right. in this valley. And there are many people that do not, cannot afford any kind of transportation to go anywhere to shop that's reasonably priced because the local stores are hugely expensive and these people are living on little to no income. I mean, it's, it's interesting to think about um, the way that we've commodified food versus water. Um, if you think about it, water is sort of this just like public resource that everyone pays into every month to have access to. Um, and food is not that, even though you need both of them to survive. What is day today? 420. Do you want some fingerling yes. potatoes? Yes. Okay. We want them to feel, to know that we've all been there. I know I used to go to food bank way back when, and I, it gives me great joy to be able to do it because others did it to me when I needed it. So now I'm so glad to be able to pay it forward. Uh, what kind of meat do you want? Um, I would do the hamburger, hon. What about those little potatoes? You want one of these? Yes, yeah, thanks. I love coming to the food bank, you know. Um, even if I didn't need anything, I would come to the food bank because she just makes you feel so comfortable. You I'll know, like, uh, well, like I said, you know, even if you didn't need anything, she's here, you know, um, just even to come sit with. She makes you feel that comfortable. Switching our mindset to thinking about food as something as important as water, maybe we can start to shift the way that we access food and the way that we offer food. Um, if we can shift it into less of like a, a luxury to be able to go to the grocery store and get the things that you need and more of just a basic human right, um, there might be some changes. You know, being able to shift the conversation about what food actually is. I know in my heart, or I believe in my heart, that people who are self-sufficient, they don't want to go to the food banks. My heart aches to think that at one time there was a way for people to be self-sustaining and for whatever reason that was broken. So I know that right now what I'm doing is an immediate need. So. Let's address the immediate needs so we can get to the to the hopes and the dreams of um, you know the future.